Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good day, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to the next episode of No Dice, No Glory. Sponsored by our jobs that actually pay us money, we're coming to you, not at all live, from an abandoned arms factory deep under a mountain in West Virginia. We are proud to proffer to you the finest in wargaming coverage. Without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. Hey, well, thank you very much there, Sean. Uh, we got a special, special, you know, all of our podcasts are someone special, but I got a couple of guys that are here to talk about a game that is coming up on Kickstarter, and I'm turning it over to No Dice, No Glory's own Phil Bulger to do the lion's share of this interview. You'll figure out why in a minute. So I want to introduce uh, Zade Cook, Sam Brush, and Phil Bulger. Welcome, guys, to the show. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Mitch. Hey, no so. problem, man. Glad you guys are here. So, uh, what are we here to talk about? So, Sam and I developed Academy, the West Point board game. So, based on our own time, we're both West Point graduates, the U.S. Military Academy. And over the past few years, we've been working on this game. And it's, it's West Point in board game form. So, you're a cadet. You're going through four years. You know, you take boxing class, you do obstacle courses, you take exams. And over the four years, we tried to pack as much West Point into this one game as possible. And uh, we're finally ready to go on Kickstarter. Uh, so we're here to talk about the game. Well, we'll have a lot of questions for you. Uh, full disclaimer, I am also a graduate of the same August institution. And uh, if you would have told me immediately after graduating, Phil, would you ever like to play a game about this? I, I might have looked at you like I wanted to, to murder you. But with uh, some more time in the rear view, it, it really is something that seems really good to game, right? Like you have to do so many different types of tasks when you're at West Point. Could you guys break down sort of what the big categories of things you have to do are? Yeah. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, so uh, basically at West Point, point all your training is broken down into three different categories you said it's uh they're called pillars and you got military academic and physical like academic is your things like your your tests and your different classes you take military that's everything from shining in your shoes and parades all the way over it's like rifle qualification and land navigation and physical that's just all the physical training you do so sports uh, different obstacle courses and different physical tests like that and I can attest from my own personal experience, uh, it, it was a lot to balance. Um, and it, it, it comes all at once and it just does not stop from the moment that uh, the moment you get to beast to the moment you graduate. It's, it's hard to have a second to breathe. Um, maybe when you get raised up from a plebe to a yuck. I think I, I think I remember relaxing a little bit then. But then that's when they also start hitting you with the harder courses. So See, anyway, this is just, this is where you guys need to come with subtitles. Because, oh, you know, it, plebe, is that like a dually? Uh, yeah, yes. It is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. So th that was one of our challenges in the game was there's so much West Point lingo and lore and myths and words that are tossed around. So we tried to make the game playable to West Point, like West Point alum, as well as people just like the general public. So we have a glossary in the back that's like every little West Point term you could think of, of SOCH run to IOCT, every acronym. Uh, but I think that the rules are spelled out in a way that hopefully uh, it doesn't like go over your head if you don't know every single vocab word. So how does the game put you, it puts you in the role of, of a plebe going into your first year at the academy. How right. do the mechanics put you through that um, fire hose slash blender environment of a service academy? Yeah, so the mechanic we chose was worker placement to simulate sort of like the scarcity of your time. So in the game, there's nine different locations you can go to, and you only have four meeples, right? Little cadet pieces. So it really, you feel stretched thin in the sense that like, oh, do I want to go to the library and study? Do I want to go take my final exam? Do I want to go to the gym? And there's never enough time or resources to do everything. So that's probably the closest thematically we have to this like overwhelming lack of sleep type existence you have as a cadet. 
Yes. Can you die of exhaustion? Say, say that again. Can you die of exhaustion? Uh, you cannot die in the game. I think that would have been a bad look. So we avoided, you cannot get kicked out of West Point or die um, <laughs> in the game. Well, I mean, that makes sense. You're trying to show people what, what cadet life is like. And, you mm -hmm. know, regardless of maybe some unfortunate accidents, it's, it's a lot of, I, I agree with you, time management is a huge part of it. And you never feel like you have enough. Uh, worker placement does seem like a really good way to to get that across. Um, something I also like that you guys did is I, I'm a real big fan of the artwork you've shown off so far on the Trophy Point Games Facebook page. Um, mm -hmm. One of my favorites is actually you guys gave each of the meeple colors sort of a flavor of the types of cadets that go to West Point. Would, would you like to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so... Uh... We chose like kind of who are the four people or types of cadets that go to West Point. It's like A, you have the direct admits, so the people who go straight from high school, so they're all very young, like either 17 or 18. Then you have the prepsters. So those are the ones who went to the USMAPS prep school uh, the year before going to West Point. They either were like an athlete or a lot of them have been prior service. I just needed basically an opportunity to come back up and re focus up on some academics. They go in, so they're a little bit older and they've been in the West Point mindset for a year. Uh, then you have the prior service, and those are the, the ones who have been in the Army, or they were enlisted before going to West Point. The last one we have are sort of the, we chose a core squad. So those ones are basically, basically the uh, recruits for all the D1 sports teams at West Point. It's a nice little flavor to put in, I think, because um, obviously, Players being players, they'll still refer to the meeples by their colors. I mean, I, I always end up defaulting to that. But uh, I thought it was nice you guys took the effort to sort of explain that. And again, for people to pick up this game for the first time that maybe don't really understand who goes to West Point, how does it work, do you have to be in the Army first? Well, kind of, if that's one way to get in, but it's not the only way to get in. Um, I just thought it was a nice way to show that off. So let's talk a little bit about what inspired you guys to make this game. Was it games that you were playing? Was it more looking at the board gaming scene and going, hmm, there's room for this? Or was it just plain old gamification of being at West Point? I think it was, It goes back to what you mentioned, that West Point is an inherently gamifiable system. I mean, you, you have the compartmentalization of the three pillars, academic, military, physical. And also you have the way you get like a class rank at the end of every semester, and that's a score. So in the game, you finish with a score, and that's your class rank. So I think we saw it as an inherently gamifiable th thing. And then also, it's a theme that hasn't been touched, right? Military schools, military cadets. Uh, it's such a unique microculture that it was just like waiting for someone to make a game about it. And uh, also, I think as you get years away from graduating, like you said, you kind of get these like rose-tinted gl rose glasses. Oh, West Point. Wow. We had so many good times. Um, so it's sort of our way of giving back to like the alumni community and West Point as well. I mean, so, obviously, I'm a big fan of that. So mm -hmm. do the players – so it's to win the game, I guess it's highest class rank after your four years. So you could play it solo. Is there any chance that you could be you could blue falcon your buddies, which needs to be in the glossary? Uh, there's no solo mode because a lot of the game is driven by head-to-head -head competitions uh, with like card playing and dice. But yeah, there's a few different abilities you can definitely blue falcon people with. And um, we're not gonna. You have to look that one up on your own. <laughs> Uh, but believe it or not, if you know, you know, <laughs> believe it or not, a couple of years ago, I asked um, Alexa what that was. And Alexa actually told me. And <laughs> now when I ask Alexa, it's like, oh, I can't say that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, somebody. Um, so in, in, a, in a game turn, you know, because it's for me, this is interesting because I worked at a service academy. I didn't go to one. Um, and it wasn't West Point. Take us through like what a player goes through and different options you have uh, throughout a turn. And is there like a strategy that you may recommend to people that pick up the game that listen to this? 
Sure. So there, there's two main phases of the game. The first is the cadet placement phase, like I mentioned. So you're choosing where you want your cadets to go. And the way that works is you're choosing, yes, what cards you want to draw. So, you know, do you want physical cards? Do you want academic cards? Do you want military cards? And you're also choosing which competitions to enter. And the next phase of the game, those competitions sort of like engage. So you're drawing the battle lines and also drawing the cards in the first phase. And then in the second phase, you know, hey, who showed up at the library? All right, well, we're going to have our final exam there. And then you kind of have a head-to-head -head thing. Or, hey, who showed up at the football stadium? All right, we're going to play a football game. And you have this head-to-head -head competition with other players there. Uh, and then whoever wins that competition gets the most points. And then second place is, you know, some consolation award. And third place is a very tiny award. So that's how the game operates uh, in a nutshell. So it's a lot of mini competitions that, mm -hmm. based on where you've placed your workers, you will do better in some areas. So it's good to see what your opponents are doing, um, because I'm sure that they're all worth different points based on if it's academic, athletic, or or yep. military. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's a little bit of a the way the competitions are resolved. It's like simultaneous card play. So hey, I. I'm going to put down two cards from my hand. You're going to put down two, two or three cards from your hand. And it's a very much like, you know, I think what you think, what I think I'm going to do, that kind of situation. So cards are your primary mechanic in the game for, for player interaction, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. There's some blocking with the cadet placement and worker placement, right? If I take that spot, you can't take it. But most of the direct player interaction comes in the competitions, which are card driven. Okay, that makes sense. So, one of the things that I'd also be curious about we've talked a, we've talked a lot about West Point has a lot of weird lingo. There's a lot of strange things that if you don't necessarily understand there. Have you guys done any play testing with people that have little to no West Point experience? And if so, how did they react? Yeah, so we did plenty of testing with people who had either like been to West Point or like repairs so, or even just plenty of people who are like maybe never even heard of West Point other than is that where you went for undergrad. Um, and what we found is like we laid the cards out where really the only important piece of information is the color of the card and the number on the card. Um, and the artwork, a lot of them think like, wow, this looks really impressive. It looks really cool. I'm like, oh, what does this mean? Like, what is a slash run? Because I always mispronounce it. Um, <laughs> And then, so, but really, you don't need to know anything about West Point, and you can still play and have fun because you—that's really the important information—is dictated by the graphic design, not by the artwork or by the um, names of the cards. So that so, that speaks to an appeal of design that I really like, which is you guys have leveraged the the relatively straightforwardness of a Euro game worker placement design. That then, as people understand how the numbers interact, their eyes wander to the art. And you get those questions. That's uh, it, it's nice to hear that you guys are having that experience. But I, I think that speaks to good design if it's easy for people to understand, and it's so easy that they start asking questions about, hey, what else is up with this? Why is this so valuable? Yeah, and the weight of the game that we were targeting, we didn't want to make a game like Candyland, or you roll a die and move along a track, something so basic and easy, or reskin Monopoly or something like that. Hey, Candyland is a tough game. <laughs> well, maybe if you're, yeah, it, I guess it depends on your, your skills. But I, for our... <laughs> I think that's actually the Naval Academy simulator. Whoa. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, well, for our game, we, we also didn't want a game that was too complicated, right? That you couldn't pull out with your family or a West Point mom, you know, something like that. So we tried to strike a middle ground between too simple and too complicated. A game that we would have fun playing as hobby board gamers, uh, but also something that families could pick up and enjoy. So that. That seems like a tough balance for me from a design standpoint. How did you guys make sure you got everything you wanted in the game while still keeping it accessible? So the, good question. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah. So good the, question. The, yeah. 
The first thing we focused on was just making it sort of like the core mechanics as simple as possible. Um, so for instance, like, hey, like a lot of times when we play people with people the first year, they have like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to place a person here, play some cards and see what happens. Um, so you can sort of get the basics of how the game flows, usually after playing one round or two of the four rounds in the game. And then after that, what really kind of, you get into the strategy of trying to optimize, like, like where do I place to get the most points or draw to get the most cards? And try to like, sort of get more game on that way. So we try to say, like, hey, the rule set's very simple. But if you want to kind of use either, like, prior knowledge or your kind of the sense you develop after playing the game, then you can kind of make tactical decisions that makes it more fun for more experienced board game players. Yeah, I think it has some good traits of a gateway game, and that is you don't have to think hard if you don't want to, and you can do all right. But if you do want to optimize and turn your brain on, there's nuances that you'll notice in different ways to maximize points and cards and stuff like that. So. We've tested it with groups of varying board game skills, and it's gone down pretty well with a variety of people. What are some of the most interesting comments that you got from those people? And what is some feedback that may have been hard to take that uh, you guys really used to um, kind of massage the final product? Interesting. All right. So one interesting comment I got was I showed it to one of my TAC officers. So like one of my former commanders from West Point, and he was mad that like there was not any TAC officers in the game. And so he proposed an expansion where your commander comes around, yells at you, doesn't really do anything or influence the game, but just exists. Um, so interesting suggestion. Maybe we'll take it up in an expansion. But I, I'd love to yeah. hear from my classmates who are tax right now about that. So if uh, any of you guys are listening, write me your thoughts. And I'd say a harsh comment was about our rule book. And when we test this game, when we do blind play testing with non-board gamers, non-board gamers don't like reading rule books. Like every sentence they read is just life draining from their brain. Right? They, Nobody likes reading rule books. And people that say they read the rule books often lie or they don't remember it. Sorry, yeah. guys. Mitch, there are at least three people on Board Game Geek that would be very mad to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's true on um, Board Game Geek, but from playing games with real people, every, everybody's like, no, I'm an expert at this game. And not only are they quoting the rules wrong, but eh, I, you know, I don't want to beat up our audience. So let's say I'm a... <laughs> I'm in high school. <clears throat> I'm really interested in going to West Point. Um, will I learn a little bit about the point before? Am I allowed to call it that? Um, will I learn a little bit about West Point before I go there from this game? Like, what does it teach me if I'm really interested in attending? I think it teaches a lot of the basic terms and lingo. So you'll, you'll learn what the four years are called, what uh, how, how the academic, military, physical, the building names. We tried to stuff in some like legends and myths. So I, I think it gives you sort of a, an all-encompassing kind of look at some of like these niche West Point topics. You know what I'm waiting for? Like, you know, you have a plea pr class there and everybody's all nervous and scared, as I'm sure you guys were. And mm -hmm. some guy's like, I got this. I played the board game. Well, that instilled <laughs> confidence in, uh, in uh, folks in that class. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if playing the board game will make you a better cadet. I can't make that promise. It might uh, make you more informed, but in terms of being a good cadet, oh, I don't know. The game yeah, obviously... Yeah. That, that is a tall order, Mitch. I could tell you, uh, <laughs> at least in my class, there were plenty of guys who showed up with their dad's copy of Bugle Notes, and it never seemed to help them much. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that like our contrails? So, y you know, it's <laughs> yes, it won't make them a good cadet, but it seems to me that the game, and from looking through it, it shows you what is important to focus on at a military service academy. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I've been on staff at the Air Force Academy, and 
you have your grade point average. You have your, your military grade point average. Um, you have to do athletics. It's it's essentially you know we give you a, a you know a, a size twelve foot and you got to put it in a size six shoe. Um, it seems like the game covers those concepts very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've heard stories of people coming to West Point with to, showing up to their basic training with a guitar and thinking it's like summer camp. So if you play this game, I think you'll at least realize, wow, there's a cadet has to do a lot of things, has to balance their school and their physical stuff and their military stuff. So I think from that perspective, we did get the highlights of here are the major things, the major gates you have to pass as a cadet. Yeah, yeah, that, that uh, you know, look, any information on any of the service academies, because it's so far in the people, just putting mm-hmm. it out there in a game where it's fun to play, I think that, you know, folks are going to immensely enjoy this. What, you know, West Point, if, if, you know, one thing I know about, because I've been there a lot, I, I grew up near there, um, a lot of history there. How are you guys reflecting West Point's great history? <clears throat> so some of our, some of the terms in the game are, they're things that have existed as far as like West Point has existed, right? Walking hours or the different names of the barracks, like these things are sort of name dropped in the names of cards or in the theme text of cards, little quotes that we've added. Uh, And I, the glossary really in a few sentences for each of the terms says, oh, this person, Sylvanus Thayer, father of West Point, class of 1800, you know, whatever. And it, I, the glossary combined with name dropping these little historic terms throughout the game is sort of the best way we've we've tried to express that history. I thought Thayer was the guy that owned the hotel. Uh, he the hotel is I'm, named after him. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so talking for a second about uh, you guys mentioned you're both recreational board gamers as well. Um, obviously, our, our podcast here, we tend to focus more on, on war games, but Mitch and myself are, are more or less omni-gamers that have played uh, a lot of everything. Um, I'm curious, what did you guys get started on, and what were the games you played that really made you think, like, hey, I could design something like this? Your influences. Sam, what do you think? <coughs> yeah, so... Like some of the big board games I have, like Catan, uh, Scythe, um, Clank is another one that's really fun. Uh, a lot of those board games we play that like we, we play like obviously a ton of board games either in the barracks or just like part of like a board games club. Now we just play games a lot. Um, in terms of like designing one, earlier like we just thought like board games were cool, and then wanted to kind of proceed to hey, like, West Point could be turned into a board game. So in terms of, like, games that inspired me to create another one, I can't say that there necessarily was one Um, because we also chose to do worker placement, which is not one of the genres that I'm big into. Um, But it turned out just to be what kind of fit best. And we're just like, hey, we like I like games, and so I, like, maybe want to try designing one. So every gamer out there, you you too can design the next great board game. Definitely. What was your biggest obstacle in doing this? (laughs) Which one do we pick? Did you guys get into a fight at any time? No, I I think we've gotten along really well. Uh, For for me, the biggest obstacle was just how to take this massive theme of like West Point. I was there for four years. How do I take four years of my life and put it in a board game that can be played in 45 to 60 minutes so like there's so many little things i wanted to add and just like chipping away at that giant block was very challenging did you put yourself in the board game yes yeah actually we did you can look look (laughs) through the cards and sam and i are both illustrated on some of the cards two of the cards there's nothing wrong with that and i'm studying um, yeah, I'm studying too, which is what I spent like three quarters of my free time doing at West Point anyway. So it's fitting. 
<laughs> yeah, like I'm playing frisbee in company athletics, which is one thing I love doing. So, so you you picked your art well. Um, what what did Grad say about this game? I, Phil, I, have you tried it? You've tried it, right? So I, I've set it up, but unfortunately, I haven't had time for a full playthrough yet. The uh, the folks I've been trying to get together haven't been available when I've liked them. Um, I do have the code though, and I've been been checking it out on TTS. So I'm looking forward to getting it to the table, but I haven't yet. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, let's talk about that Kickstarter campaign, by the way. And after get, but go ahead. Sorry, Yetta, you're about to say something. Oh, I was just gonna say part. Some of the players we play tested with have been grads, and I think there's a lot of little pieces in the game that make them chuckle. Just kind of it triggers memories in your brain. Oh wow, I remember nights and nights of cleaning the barracks. All right, well, I can do that in this game too, you know? So the Kickstarter campaign, um, this podcast uh, will be out on uh, next Tuesday. Uh, isn't that the day you're kicking off your campaign? Yep, exactly. <laughs> February 1st. How long is it going to run for? It's going to run the full month of February. Uh, you had to pick the shortest month, huh? Well, uh, I, maybe that's good. I don't know. It, it's plenty of time for people to check out the game, and we're hoping it catches on. Now, you we talked about Tabletop Sim. Is that going to be open for folks to check out uh, before yes. they hit go? Let's talk about that one. How can, how can I find it? <laughs> okay, yeah. So if you go to Steam and into the, the workshop on Tabletop Simulator, you can search Academy of the West Point board game, and there will also be a link to the Tabletop Simulator version on our Kickstarter page. So search for it or click the link there, and it's completely free to play all the assets of the game. Uh, you can try out the digital form uh, before deciding whether or not you're, you'd like to back it. Are you guys nervous about the campaign at all? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's oh, gonna, yeah. How many times a day are you going to limit yourselves from checking it? I'm going to try to do just once a day. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's sort of been my workflow working on the game is, all right, I block out a chunk of time, and this is just like game design time. And so that's been a healthy way to approach it for me. So when the Kickstarter ends, I want you to tell our uh, listeners how many times you actually checked it. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. I'll tell you, until it funds, I'm going to be checking it all the time. But then after that, that's you know, what most people do. Big sigh of relief. And then if it does, it'll be like, hey, like just from here, I can just check back periodically and see if we reach any stretch goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, let's talk what about are you guys those. For those. Yeah, definitely got my attention. Sam? Yeah, so mostly like, there's, we wanted to keep it relatively simple for um, obviously our audience. A lot of them might not really know how Kickstarter works to begin with and might not understand stretch goals too much. And we didn't want to like levy kind of too much behind them. So majority of them are just like component upgrades um, just to make the game like just a higher quality. Probably the only content-based thing is if you notice we have 12 different West Point events in the game already. These are just like little one-year rule changes, and they'll be like, oh, like 500th night has some rule, or 100th night has some rule, or Lee Parent Weekend has some rule. So we have six additional ones of those that will get designed um, if we reach that stretch goal. And oh. one of them, one of yep. them lets you steal the goat from the Naval Academy. So I really oh. hope that makes it, makes it in the game. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we got to make sure we get a copy of the game for Doug. So. We're going to put this uh, so folks know. Um, I'm going to try to update the link. Well, you should have your Kickstarter link ahead of time. So I'm going to put it in this podcast, the announcement. I'm going to put it on the No Dice, No Glory uh, Facebook page. Um, so if it gets like a thousand hits, can you put in the Bulger card? What do you mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I don't. <laughs> he's, he's talking about me. Hold, hold oh. on here just a second. I control the rights to my likeness, Mitch. Oh, he, I mean, he, you, he doesn't have to look like Phil, but you know, the uh, No Dice, No Glory Bulger card that does something, you know, it's 
you know, you do not pass go and you go straight to jail or something like that. Yes, I, I will tell you on our printing sheets, we, we've calculated it all out and there's space for one more card to be drawn and put in the game. So it could be Phil. <laughs> could, be, pre- could be nothing. Yeah, a lot, lot of pressure, pressure on the site, Mitch. We got to get a lot of hits on this one. Oh, let me tell you, we'll push it, man. I, you know, I've been, I've been pushing the hell out of um, Sebastian's game, even with the name change that uh, just came out. But I, I would love to see the NDNG Phil Bulger card or Bulger card. Um, you could, you know, you could put a picture of uh, Grant up there. Nobody will know the difference. Well, if we're if we're doing uh, ego, I got to tell you guys, there is already a Cadet Bulger card in the wild for a totally different game. Really, so, there was a game that came out in 2016 on uh, on Kickstarter called Fallen Land, post apocalyptic board game, made by my friend John Longren. and I was the promotional card for their 2018 Gen Con release. Did it look like I- you? It did. It was actually a picture. I I had an artist that I really like uh, do a painting of how I looked uh, in a in a pose. Like it's one of those plebe. I'm trying to look tough, so I'm aiming my M14 at the camera. Um, for our viewers at home, don't panic. The the M14s at West Point, their barrels are filled with lead. They have no firing pin. They're slightly more harmful than the average baseball bat. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the that's the picture out there. Uh, after the podcast, I'll I'll link it in the chat. Uh, I'm going to post it because I have Fallen Land and I was just uh, trading messages with John just the other day because he's, I guess he's doing a reprint. So I'm going to see if I have the Cadet Bulger card. If not, I should have it because he, he handed me all these cards at uh, Gen Con. So hopefully I have the Bulger card. And when I see you again, can you please sign it for me? Yeah, but this isn't my podcast. Let's keep the focus on the trophy point guys here. Well, will, yeah, yeah. What I will tell you is if, if I get the card, um, I've already got a monument to my ego out in the board game world. Uh, what I think would be cool, and i got to know do you already have it, do you have a card for a board game club already in the game? No. No. Oh, I, I know it's meta. I know it, maybe it's too <laughs> meta, but I would I really get a kick out of that. There was no board game club when I was there. We did have a war games club. Uh, mm-hmm. It was mostly minis focused, but they had um, we could play board games there. But I've seen online the uh, the the West Point History Department will post pictures occasionally of mm-hmm. uh, using parts of their offices to play board games, and honestly, it just warms my heart. There's a place for cadets to do that. Yeah, that was a big part of my time getting through West Point was that board gaming club. I really enjoyed it. So so how much will it be on Kickstarter? So each copy will be $60, including shipping to anywhere in the U.S. Well, that's uh, – that's uh, I was about to say, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Uh, it's not all that expensive. And I'm I'm excited to see the artwork that you guys have for the game. Uh, mm-hmm. That should be interesting. So, you know, out there, you know, I don't know how many of our our listeners are West Pointers, um, but if you ask them, they're all experts on the Army. Hey, give them one last. It's really why they would enjoy this game. I think there's three reasons. So. If you've gone to West Point or you're familiar with West Point, this is going to bring back a ton of memories and a ton of stories you can share. If you're not familiar with West Point, this will be your learning opportunity. Hey, what is this military academy? What are all these weird things they do? Uh, And then lastly, as just a third reason, I think it's a good and fun game. West Point theme aside, I would, you know, sit down and have fun and try to beat people, strategize, optimize. Uh, it's a simple and, and fun game. I'm picking it up. So yeah, what about you? I'm looking forward to it. You'll have uh, – I, I want to play it a little bit more, but I got to be honest, I'm a day one backer either way. I, I, I'm i going to be writing the review for NDNG. I may actually be the worst choice because I am the West Point stand. I, I like my the place I graduated from. Uh, some people would argue that's Stockholm Syndrome. but It is. I tell you it's pride. Um Everything I've seen, though, it looks like a solid worker placement, and I'm really looking forward to playing it with my friends. Yeah, I'm, we're eager to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm excited about this game. I, you know, I think it's a cool idea. Um, I think maybe we'll motivate uh, the gaming clubs at the other service academy. 
I mean, who doesn't want a Merchant Marine Academy board game? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it is also located in New York. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a it's an amazing idea. You know, like Monopoly, to talk about, you know, a classic. You know, they have all these special versions of Monopoly, but it's still Monopoly. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, this is a game that's really dedicated to the experience that you guys went through for four years. And, yeah. you know, it, like you said, it brings back memories. Um, but, you know, it seems like from what you guys have been saying, I think that folks out there that really want a fun game that you can, how many players can play? Four. Four. Uh, that's finished within an hour. That's fun. I think that this is something you, you know, I would definitely look at and go for. And remember, we want to get that, uh, that stretch goal, all the stretch goals, because, uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you notice on our Facebook, I pushed, um, hey, this this Kickstarter has only got a week left. And I'm doing that. Well, I love helping out the community, but I want to get those stretch goals. Yeah. Yeah, so, so do we. We want to make the highest quality game we can and put as much into it as we can. So that's what stretch goals are for. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about this one. Uh, you know, before we turn it back to Sean in the studio, uh, Phil, you excited about this one? I'm pretty pumped. Uh, everything I've seen looks good. It looks like a smooth playing Euro uh, from from what I've checked, and I'm looking forward to getting some iterations in myself, probably uh, as the Kickstarter is coming out. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming here. I think it's fascinating you all have done this. Uh, some other context for people that may not be aware, um, both the designers here are also still in the Army, um, still be a junior officers. So... To have made a board game during that time uh, is pretty incredible to me. And the fact you guys did it about something near and dear to my heart is, again, I'm, I'm turning to mush here. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to supporting you guys on Kickstarter. Thanks, yeah. Phil. Thank you, Mitch. Oh, no problem. So check out the game on Kickstarter. Uh, these guys will send us the link, and the link will be below. Or check out the uh, No Dice, No Glory Facebook thread. And we're going to be pushing this one as much as we can. I think this is an amazing idea. And, you know, this is the first game that you guys have designed. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we love, we love helping out brand new uh, and up and coming gamers. So let me just cut to the chase. What's game number two going to be about? Oh, can we go to the dark side and make a air force Academy board game, a Naval Academy board game? Yeah. You know, I, I hopefully some grads out there will get motivated. Because I'm sending this link to their board game club. <laughs> and um, we actually know the guy that teaches war gaming at Annapolis. So maybe True. he'll uh, he'll throw a little fire in their belly and uh, love to get the game in their hands. Because, you know, it may help them for the Army-Navy football game. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. Army-Navy game off would be crucial. Which one of you guys can get better ratings on BGG? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd love yeah. that. Yeah, I uh, I think that'd be good. Is, is the Commander in Chief's trophy in the game? No, Army Navy football game is Army Air Force football game is one of the stretch goals. So we got to get oh. there, and we'll add that to the to the game. We got to get that one there. Mm-hmm. Totally got to get that one there. Yeah, because you know, Zoomy Cessna, you baby, it's uh, you know. Because I, I told them, you know, folks about this game, and they're like, what? I'm like, you know, the Army's moving out. Mm-hmm. They have all that history behind them, you know. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's exciting. So and then again, I, I, I'd, have, I'd have no problem with West Point being the only academy with a board game. I would be okay with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'll tell you what. I, you know, from looking through it on TTS, I think you guys got some really solid mechanics out there. And I'm excited. You know, because I have a feeling in a year or two, we're going to have other people that are going to be saying, I was really inspired by this game. Um, it's got a fund. So make sure you buy your games uh, on, uh, you know, as soon as it comes out on one Feb. But guys, thanks so much for coming on. I'm going to turn it back to Sean in the uh, studio. But uh, if you just want to say a round of goodbyes. Yeah, thanks a lot for having us, Mitch and Phil. This has been great. Well, yeah, we love talking. (laughs) That's great talking to you guys.
Thanks so much for joining the show tonight. Remember to follow us on Twitter at No Dice, No Glory. And keep the conversation going on NoDiceNoGlory.com, now featuring our own message boards. Have a great night, everybody.